problem. We're going to, again, address exactly the same problem as the previous uh, two videos, a problem where the electric field is uniform. It's always the same value everywhere. It's always pointing in the I direction. And the question is exactly the same. What's the potential difference between point B and point A? But we want to now uh, do it for an arbitrary path and show specifically very clearly that it doesn't depend on the path. So remember the definition of the potential difference between two points, VB minus VA, is minus integration from A to B, E dot dr. And when you write down this, uh, this integration, you need to choose a path. Let's say this particular path. It could be any kind of path of any shape. And when you do this integration, remember you have to cut up your path into small elements of length, dr. The elements of length go along the path from one point to the other point. This is what the integral is. Now, what, what is so specific about a constant or uniform electric field that can make us get this the answer very easily? How, what can I do with this E vector in the integration? Since E is constant, it's just a constant vector, it's uniform. What can I do with it? Obviously, you can take out the electric field from the integration with the dot product. So you're left with integration of dr. So you, this is the same thing as this. Since E is vector is constant, you can bring it out of the integration. Now, when you bring it out of the integration, what is left over? And what's left over is integration from A to B dr. What does this mean? What does this integration mean exactly? Integration means you're getting this dr and you're adding to it this dr and you're adding to it this vector and you're adding to it this vector and you're adding to it this vector. When you add all these vectors, what do you get? This is pure math. When you add vectors, you, that's that this vector starts here and ends here. This vector starts at the end here and ends over here and so on. When you add all these vectors, it will just equal to one vector that starts from point A to point B. So I can replace this integration. It's just nothing but the vector that points from A to B, RAB. So we get the result that the potential difference between B and A is just minus the electric field, the uniform electric field, dotted into the vector that points from point A to point B. The dot product between any two vectors is the magnitude of the first, the magnitude of the second, times cosine of the angle between them. This is the cosine of the angle between them. This is the vector RAB and this is the electric field. So the angle between them is this angle theta. Now what is RAB? times cosine theta. Since RAB cosine theta, this distance times cosine of the angle theta, isn't it just the distance D? This is just pure math, pure uh, math. So we get the result that the potential difference is minus E times D, which is exactly the result we got before. And we showed here in this case that it doesn't depend at all on the particular path. If you choose any other path, when you add all the vectors dr, you still get the vector rab. So it doesn't depend at all on the particular path. And the difference in potential always turns out to be minus e times d. If you make the angle 90 degrees, if I go to point c over here instead of point b that was over here, I make the angle between the position vector from a to c 90 degrees with respect to the electric field, then the potential difference is zero. So that means that any point along this line that's perpendicular to the electric field, the potential is the same everywhere because the potential difference is zero. If the potential at C minus the potential at A is zero, the difference is zero, that means that the potential is the same value. For instance, if the potential here is 100, then the potential here has to be 100, then the potential here has to be 100, then the potential here has to be 100, everywhere here is the same potential. So this is why we can illustrate graphically or in an illustrative way the potential in this region by this kind of gradient uh, uh, picture. The, the darker the color, the higher the potential. So you can see here also that the electric field vectors are going from the region of high potential to the region of low potential. And this is always what happens. And it's a consequence of the minus sign in the, de in the de definition that we gave for the definition of the, of the relationship between electric field and potential. So always the electric field vector always goes from a region of high potential to a region of low potential. And also 
as you go in, the, in this direction perpendicular to the electric field, the potential has the same value, the same number. It only changes when you go this way or this way. But when you go this way, it stays the same value. So this allows us to define something called the equipotential surface. And this problem, where you have a uniform electric field looking at it in three dimensions like this, the equipotential surfaces are planes. If you go on any plane perpendicular to the electric field vectors, the potential, the value of the potential everywhere on that plane has the same value. For instance, let's say the value of the potential on this plane is 5 volts. That means that when you go to any point on this plane, the value of the potential is still is always 5 volts. This plane, the potential on this plane could have a different value. It's maybe 10 volts. So that means that every if you go any point on this plane, the value of the potential could be 10 volts and so forth for this plane. So these are three examples of uh, equipotential surfaces that in this case are planes for this particular problem. And as you see here, the electric field vectors always go from a region of high potential to a region of low potential. This is always the case.